These images are random noise, random bits of ink with no meaning. Except in some of them, we've hidden an object. Do you see an object in any of these images? If you do, you might be a conspiracy theorist. That's because recent studies have shown that if you see meaning in the random, you're more likely to believe in conspiracy theories. So just how conspiracy obsessed is Sydney? Hold it, so like that far away from you? Yeah. Yeah? I'm not interviewing you, am I? No, no okay. you're not interviewing me, don't worry. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. So do you believe in any kind of conspiracy theories? Yeah. Sure. You do. So what sort of conspiracy theories do you believe in? Love like a good Bermuda Triangle story. I just love a good story. If someone tells it well, I'm here for it. Do you believe that Princess Di's death was maybe organised? Yeah, I believe so very strongly. Yeah? I think it was a cover-up. I don't, no. Not, not really, not, not really. for that sort of stuff. Do you think that maybe the moon landing was fake? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Moon landing conspiracy theory. No, I think we landed on the moon. Not really the moon landing, maybe alien cover-ups, definitely. Anywhere where there's a bureaucracy, there's a cover-up. Right. So do you believe that, you know, governments are hiding bits of alien spacecrafts and things like that? OK. About a quarter of Australians actually share this belief, according to a 2022 survey. OK, okay. so I'm going to show you these images. OK. So Could it be that conspiracy believers see meaning where there is none? Can you see any objects in any of these? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Number three, it looks like a tent of some sort. It's like a prism kind of shape. A triangle. Triangle? OK. Mm, a bit like a bow or something. That looks like a sailboat. Number three looks like a sailing boat. In number one, I can see like a room of some sort. Actually, that looks like the interior of a house. To be the floor. Yeah. The back walls. So you've got like the straight lines of the floor and then like oh, windows, walls. I see, yeah. Walls. I see what yeah. you mean, yeah. I, I can't work out number two though. A hippo in that one? A hippo, okay. A face somewhere there. Yeah. I see a little, like a squirrel here, the eyes, eyes and a nose. The head's here and like the body's here. You see it too? Yeah, yeah it's squirrel. like a little face, right? A very rough aircraft there. Oh, okay. And you can't see anything else in any of these? I don't really see much else. No, not at all. Oh, you just go out on that. Yeah, she can only see mm. the yacht. She can only see the yacht? Okay. Well, I can reveal to you now that we've actually only hidden an object in one of these images. A sailing boat in that one. Number three. Hey! Three. What was it? What was it? What was it? It was, it was number three. It was our yacht. Yeah. Three. There's actually nothing else in these images. In one, two or four? No. Okay. There was actually nothing particularly here where you saw the hippo. <laughs> the rest are just random noise. Oh, okay. Wow. That makes so much sense now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> People's brains tend to make connections. They see patterns that aren't necessarily Ooh. there or like faces are very common as well. Yep. And people who are more open to believing in conspiracy theories, you're actually more likely to see something in these really? images. Really? That's so interesting. Okay, cool. Some may say we just have a creative imagination. Okay, so some people saw some things in those images that I honestly could not see at all. I had to get them to point things out for me. And yes, we did find some conspiracy believers. And it was interesting that those people tended to be the people who were seeing some interesting objects in those images. So why do our brains see patterns in things that can be completely random? Are they glitching? Basically, our perception of the world isn't what we actually see. We're making up what's actually out there based on basically predictions. We're pre predicting what we're actually seeing and then we're creating this visual world. And so we need patterns so that we can do that quickly. A really good example of that is the no stopping sign just down the end here. Okay. And the no stopping sign is red. And the reason that captures your attention is that we learned the red signs or red things are potentially dangerous. Red in itself, of course, isn't dangerous, but we've learned or we have a pattern in our brain. Right, so it's a bit of a shortcut. It is a shortcut, yeah. Pattern recognition gives us these really simple ways of actually perceiving the world. But of course, because the world's not simple and people aren't simple, we, we then make a lot of mistakes when we're actually doing things, and especially when we're doing things quickly. And is that what conspiracy theorists are doing? Absolutely, yes. Like when I show somebody a photo of random noise and they see a picture in it, does that mean that they're making a pattern that actually doesn't exist? Yeah, illusory pattern perception's a really cool experiment where we show people these patterns and people perceive things that aren't there often. 
But those patterns, they're illusions. They're not actually there. And are some people more prone to seeing these patterns than other people? We're more prone if we're in a state of stress. So we all saw the awful things that happened at the end of Donald Trump's reign in power in the US and how dedicated the MAGA people were to Donald Trump. And that has a lot to do with the fact that they felt as though they were in danger, right? They're going to hear what Donald Trump says completely differently to someone who actually isn't keen on Donald Trump. We're always perceiving things differently based on what we actually want to hear and what we don't want to hear. So a conspiracy theory starts as pattern recognition gone wrong, and that gets amplified by a lack of control over events happening around us. But a person's conspiracy belief can be locked in when they find other people that confirm what they think. Is that what confirmation bias is? Yeah, absolutely. We like to be right <laughs> as humans. And so we notice when things actually confirm our biases and we don't notice when things don't confirm our biases. And all of us do that constantly. I'd love to believe that I don't have these biases. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> I'm going to show you right now how susceptible you are to all of this. Great. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so we have four cards here with letters and numbers. And we have a rule, and you've got to work out whether the rule is actually correct. And the rule is that if there is a vowel, then there is an even number underneath, yeah? Okay. But you're only allowed to turn over two cards to confirm or disprove that theory. So which two cards would you actually turn over? Right, sure. So I'm trying to prove or disprove the rule that under every vowel there is an even number. That's correct. Okay, so I would choose a mm -hmm. and four. <laughs> you are susceptible to confirmation okay. biases. Great, good. <laughs> All right, so I just fell into your trap. Is you what did, you're saying. but 90% of people would actually choose those two cards, which is to go with the A and the four. The rule is, is that if it's a vowel, then there's an even number underneath. But not if it's an even number, there's a vowel underneath. Oh, yeah? okay. So using right. this one isn't actually ideal. Confirmation bias is about always trying to be right. What you're trying to do, which most of us are trying to do, is confirm yeah, that the hypothesis is correct rather than actually trying to disprove that it's correct. What you actually need to look at is under nine, it's not okay yeah, to have a vowel underneath the nine. Right. So that's the one you should actually be choosing. Okay. Yeah, A was correct though, so well done. You got 50%, <laughs> I got 50%. of it. That's right. a pass. That is a pass. That is a pass. <laughs> So is there any way of preventing people from falling into conspiracy beliefs? So it all depends on how many of those rules or patterns you actually have in your brain. And so actually increasing the number of patterns you have by actually learning and experiencing the world, travelling, for example, having lots of different friends that you actually interact with, all of those things are actually going to increase the number of options that you have in your brain that you're comparing with the outside world more people in our in-group is also going to help. So we want an in-group that has lots and lots of people from different experiences so that they can tell us or talk to us about whether or not the conspiracy theories make sense or don't make sense. So I guess what I've learned overall is that pattern recognition is actually a pretty essential skill. And when people are seeing patterns or shapes in that random noise, they're kind of showing off that skill. It's just that when you combine that with confirmation bias, it can tend to lead people astray in some situations. And the fact is, we're all susceptible to that.